Aloha, golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2021 Sony Open preview show and a quick look back at the Tournament of Champions. Let's get into this. So real quick, um, I apologize. I know that uh, all this information that you're seeing is very hard to read, but I just wanted to point out some things. I think this is a good way for us to recap how the players did, um, who did well in certain areas, who kind of shocked us with certain things. And so even though I know that the visualization of this is not the best, I think uh, it's a good way to go through this. Okay, so as we all know, uh, Harris English and Joaquin Neiman went to a playoff, and of course, Harris English won that playoff. Congrats to Harris. But what did they do very well? And, and, I, and I think, you know, what I wanted to kind of go over is the guys that overperformed, the guys that underperformed, um, and some things that are shocking. So let's just take it off from the beginning. So Harris English and Joaquin Neiman, of course, uh, you know, did some things very well. And, and what they did very well was, you know, their total stroke gain from T to green. Uh, Harris English uh, way overperformed on the putting, almost gaining seven strokes on the field. Uh, some things that were kind of shocking, if you put the optimal lineup together uh, from a 50K price tag, you could put together uh, with Harris, Joaquin, you could have thrown Justin Thomas in there, Ryan Palmer, and uh, Sun JM. And then I believe you had to pick one of these guys to make it work. Uh, who else was it? I think like a Daniel Berger or a Sergio Garcia would have been about the optimal lineup. Uh, kind of in my previous show, when I talked about tournament champions, you know, I, I was fading Dustin Johnson. And for sure on the first day, it looked like a really good fade. He definitely had some rust to knock off. But as I kind of mentioned, guys, uh, at that price tag, it's very rare that they will, you know, 1x their value. Uh, he fell under it, still got over 100 points, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, did not uh, did not exceed his 1x value. Now, Ryan Palmer uh, at a 7,000 uh, salary price tag actually 2x his value, which is rare um, that that will happen. But because this course is, you know, very gettable uh, with 25 birdies, three eagles, uh, he ended up with 142 points, uh, so, you know, good for whoever. Uh, and I did pick Ryan Palmer in my show. Uh, he was definitely one of my picks. I also had Joaquin Neiman as my pick and then called out Harris English in multiple uh, areas that the model popped up, but I actually did not put him as one of my uh, to win the tournament. Um, but definitely he was in my player pool, so hopefully that helped you out. Some things that were kind of shocking to me, um, Webb Simpson, even though he still got uh, over 100 points, that he lost almost, uh, well, six and a half strokes off the tee. That's that's crazy. And also, uh, you know, his putter wasn't, do, you know, which does usually a lot of damage. Um, it was really approach what he, uh, where he gained. But something to just to note, he is in this field uh, coming up. And we'll, we're going to talk a little bit about Webb. Uh, some other things to note, of course, Hideki was the big loser, um, you know, at 9,000. You know, he got you 69 points. And, uh, you know, Hideki's... Um, not the best putter, but he hasn't been nowhere near almost losing 10 strokes to the field. So I don't, you know, I didn't get to see a lot of Decky. They didn't show him um, a whole lot, but, um, you know, and if Decky was, his putter was kind of coming along. So I don't know what fell apart there. And then on the putting note, Mackenzie Hughes, who ended up pretty much, you know, with Hideki almost dead last, um, you know, it's kind of shocking that he lost six and a half strokes putting where, of course, Mackenzie Hughes, you know, why you would roster him is because of his putter. Um I don't think there was anything else that I just wanted to call out here that um, if we wanted to see some of the, the leaders in a different shocking category. Uh, so you had DeShambo, of course, leading off the tee, um, but just, you know, did not perform on approach and around the green and the putter, you know, just so a lot of the, the tee. I actually, he was one of my picks to be a winner uh, at the, could possibly win this tournament. He did all right, uh, but, you know, did not uh, just, you know, everything else except the driver, um, you know, kind of hurt him. Uh, JT, who was also a pick that I had to win this thing, um, you know, did really well on approach. But as if you watch a bit of the tournament, was a little bit sporadic with the tee ball uh, and the putter just did not uh, perform a little bit better. He would have been right there. Uh, Harris English, of course, as I mentioned, uh, led the field with putting and um, Sun JM. You know, I. I didn't have Sunjay M as a selection, but uh, he did everything very well, except the putter is where Sunjay does typically struggle, and that's why I've been kind of off him. But uh, total tee to green, he led the field. I think that's about it. It was just the things I wanted to call out. Um, 
trying to think from a price perspective. I highlighted some of these guys. Uh, so Michael Thomas was one of the guys I wanted to talk about just real quick. Um, you know, came out really slow and then really turned it on. And, and for his price tag at 6,500, uh, getting over 100 points, that was a game changer. Um, I was, of course, not on Michael Thomas. I think it looked like Robert Streb. Uh, yeah, the first day was going to be the shocker, but then he kind of fell back uh, or Robert Streb usually. So anyways, that's kind of the recap. I just wanted to kind of go over just so you get a good understanding of what some of the guys did very well, what they didn't do very well, uh, because 32 of these guys are going to play in the Sony Open. And on that, let's uh, jump into that. So they are doing uh, just a, an island hop from Maui over to Honolulu, a little 100-mile uh, flight, and uh, heading over to the Wailea Country Club in Honolulu. Uh, this course has been around, I think, since 1927 when it was officially designed by Seth Rayner. It did have a redesign. I believe it was in 2017 by Tom Doak. Um, I just mentioned also that, uh, you know, Seth Rayner did design uh, the old white TPC course uh, where they host a Greenbrier, which Neiman won in 2019. Everything I've been seeing, funny enough, Neiman getting to the playoff and uh, could have won the, the previous tournament. Uh, there's a lot of good things that are pointing to Neiman uh, doing some things very well here. Uh, from a course perspective, things to look out for, of course, wind um, that we just saw, you know, the first day and the last day. Uh, the last day, you know, the Sunday final day was probably the strongest the wind blew. But when the wind didn't blow at that uh, at the course, uh, you know, they could just boat race that thing. And so it's going to be a little bit the same here um, from a wind perspective. Uh, but the difference is this course, I would say, is, I don't want to say it's 180 degrees, but it is quite different than the course they just played. Uh, in my mind, I look at this course as like a harbor town. Somewhere where the plotters, um, I think, are going to do better than the guys. Like, we were trying to go a distance and length uh, to some degree in the previous tournament. I think this course is set up more uh, for the guys that kind of, you know, hit the ball very accurate off the tee to the spot that they want to have the correct approach shot in. Um, you know, these greens are very heavily sloped. It is going to be a bit of a putting contest. Um, and it's the guys that put them on the right side of the greens that are going to do well here. Um, so yeah, accuracy off the tee. When I say that, again, it's it's not so much about just hitting fairways. It's hitting the spots on the, which side of the fairway. There's a lot of dog legs on this course. Um, so this isn't just teed up and bomb it like you know the previous course. So then again, scrambling around the greens comes into play. Of course, approach shot, ball striking. Uh, just to note, ball striking combines off the tee with actually hitting the greens, where approach is just how close do you get it to the the hole from whatever distance. Um, they're going to need to go low. Um, in the past, you would see uh, Justin Thomas back in 2017 with 27 under. That's an anomaly just as much as last year, uh, Cameron Smith winning at 11 under. The reason why that was is, of course, the wins. And also there was uh, some new green complexes from my understanding that um, we're having some issues of actually holding shots in in certain areas. Um, but the guys are going to need to go low. Uh, this is the first full field event in 2021 um so we are looking at 65 in ties so again back to a cut event and the historic cut line is somewhere on average it's about zero to two under um that plus two just shows last um i believe it was last year or maybe it was a couple years ago um that there was a plus two uh no it would have been last year because the, the scores were definitely lower so i'd say more it's going to be somewhere around one under two under whereas the cut line will fall I already mentioned the player size, and of course, uh, the coverage is going to be kind of the same thing, almost primetime coverage on the Golf Channel is where you will get to see this. And then up here to the right, just some passwords where I mentioned Cam Smith, but you got Matt Kuchar, who had that crazy start uh, in 2019. Um, you have Patty Kuzire and JT, and what I see out of this is guys that putt very well. Um, and, you know, they, they also, some of them are very accurate off the tee. JT is just an amazing player. Uh, so you'd say, oh, well, you know, he's a bomber or what, you know, no, you could put, you put the top five elite golfers on any course. And if they have their game, they're going to do well. That's just the sum of it. Um, but JT is not in the field this week, but I believe the other three are in the field. So let's talk a little about past course conditions. I bring this up again, because that redesign from my understanding um, really kind of had some very firm uh, greens. And that kind of has went away a little bit. But what happened here was, as you can see, they had some really windy conditions. Um, 
you know, and the other is calm. But, uh, you know, like I said, all in all, I would say what I noticed um, that kind of, you know, showed through all the past course conditions is hitting fairways difficult. Now, you're only seeing three years here. Uh, but I, you know, I saw more, of course, I didn't want to go and throw up years and years of past course conditions. Um, but what I did see was that that was probably the hardest part is hitting the fairway and hitting where you want it. Back again, if you mentally think of Harbor Town, if you know that course, um, it is one of the more difficult courses on the PGA Tour um, to navigate off the tee. All right. So I think that's about it that we need to know. Again, I don't know if I mentioned, but it is Bermuda fairways, Bermuda greens. Uh, so the same green complexes um, from a size perspective what I kind of try to find the information um, I think they're about average green size but what is different is it's very uh, very slopey greens um, comparative to what they just played and what does it say for speed average okay so where the greens they just played um, were you know a little more on the velcro side very you know more slow so on a stent meter i don't know a number but i'm guessing somewhere more towards a 12 maybe to a 13 but probably i think the ones previous that we just saw were about 11 um so just to give you some ideas but again putting i think is going to be a very key stat that we're going to be looking at um and also the guys that can plot their way around a course so out of that note uh key stroking categories you know, nothing uh, really super popped up here. Of course, approach uh, and putting, as we kind of mentioned, you know, qual you know, it, it kind of requalifies what I'm already thinking. Um, you know, ball striking, short game is key here. Uh, this again is looking at the past history and looking at the top ten finishers. What did they do very well? Um, of course, you got to score on par fives, score on the par fours, um, three putt avoidance. You know, that was a big thing on the the tournament of champions. At, um, because the green complexes were so large and, you know, that was definitely in our model and uh, that kind of came to fruition. Um, and then how to win, you know, what's the areas. So the one thing that I, you know, sometimes I, I and I think it's just the way I look at this, but driving accuracy, as you see here, um, against an average tour event was not as high. And it kind of confused me a little bit because everything I've read and seen and know about the tournament, um, you know, you do need to be accurate. But the accuracy is not about, you know, just hitting fairways. It's about putting the ball on which side of the fairway. Um, so no matter what this says down here, that is key. Um, and then it did even have in driving distance. This one is not on here, but I'll just tell you, uh, uh, there was another driving distance was above average tour events. So guys had done well in the past, drove the ball um, further than average tour events at this event. But again, you need to be on the right side. Scrambling does show up, as I mentioned. Of course, greens and reg is, you know, average. Um, you can see sand saves is there. Um, bah, 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 bah. Average fairways gained by position. So again, you can see, uh, of course, you need to hit the fairways, but you need to be on the right side of the fair or the left side, depending on what the approach is. Okay, holes attack, a little bit similar to Terminal Champion. So the first couple holes are some of the tougher holes at this course, which was the same at the Terminal Champions. Um, I think it was one, two, and then seven and eight were the tough holes. And the front side was definitely tougher than the back. Uh, as you saw, the, the guys really could put start putting a street together, I think, around the 11th or 12th holes when, you know, it started becoming a birdie fest. Um, but here is kind of the same. And again, I, I just bring these up again if you're doing showdown and, you know, under the, meth the methodology of, hey, you know, and this will be where they will be shooting guys off both sides of the tees. And uh, you'll have, I believe you should have groups of three um, where you had, you know, guys just groups of two going off the first tee. Um, so there wasn't really an advantage of picking someone that was going off the back versus the first because there just wasn't that big of a field. Um, and then when you make the turn, it looks like 11 and 13 are the tough holes. And then there's this kind of looks like this area between seven uh, and 10 are the gettable. And then, of course, you got a couple holes more on the back. So just note to self um, of what this kind of looks like it's going to play uh, from past history. Now let's kind of get in. So, I, you know, I did some analysis on the field already. And um, my first, when I started to look at past winners and, you know, started to get a really good understanding of uh, what we're going to be looking for here, uh, guys that put on Bermuda uh, well have done very well here. And uh, you, so you can just kind of look at this, um, you know, Patty Kazire, who's won here in the past. If you take the field and what this was, I had filters on uh, and Bermuda was one of them. And I think I pulled the last 50 rounds putting on Bermuda. Who's the best putters on Bermuda on, in 50 rounds in this field? Um, and so Kazire came up, which, you know, 
Shocker, he was, he was a past winner. Actually, let me do that. And then also you had Matt Kuchar, who was number eight, also came up. Um, and then if you look at some of the guys at the top, Webb Simpson had a third place, a T4. You had Andrew Putnam in 2019, had a second place finish. And then this Webb Simpson, this was last year, he had a third. And then the previous year, I believe he had a T4. Um, even Kevin Kisner has got two T4s and a T5. I think he's played here about five times. Um, so, you know, Harris English shows up here. And I don't know if Neiman shows up. I don't see him. And again, this is specifically just looking at putting on Bermuda greens over the last 50 rounds, who pops up. And I just thought it was very interesting that past winners, um, you know, and guys that have done well here uh, pass up. So again, it, it pushes me towards the putting side and then guys that are accurate off tee, but not long. And then of course can hit the approach shot. So um and then also, don't usually do this, but I wanted to also just kind of follow up with a, a quick look at the field. So I've already built uh, my first model, uh, custom model within Fantasy National. Um, I still, because the driving distance thing did come up, I did want to put a little weight on it. But really, as you can see, what's heavily weighed is guys that hit good drives or fairways gain. They're very similar. Um, good drives, you know, kind of falls under adding kind of distance and hitting so it's almost a combination of these two, but I just put it all in there um, to see who came up there. Uh, greens and red came up, approach, of course, around the green, ball striking, and then, of course, putting uh, heavily weighted. Uh, sand saves are going to need to go low. So who has the best, uh, you know, gets the most birdie opportunities or eagle opportunities, birdie or better. And then the uh, distances, which is going to be different than what we just saw. So a lot of the guys we looked at before um, at the Century Tournaments, was about, you know, wedges coming in. You know, they had short distances um, where because they can't just go ahead and smoke the ball here, even though it's a shorter course, um, they're going to need to be hitting longer irons in. And so the guys that do that very well from 150 to 175 in or 175 to 200 is what's showing is typically the shots going in on the par fours. And then as you see, the par fours are a little longer uh, between 400 to 500 yards. And so that was kind of my first pass. And all I wanted to do is just throw that in, see who popped up. And amazing enough, uh, Joaquin Neiman and Harris English uh, came up is the, the top two. So that's, that was kind of interesting. And I believe, I don't know, I apologize. I don't know if I had filters on this or not. But anyways, you can at least see against the model. I don't know if I had, because I did run one that had Bermuda greens, less than 7,200 yards, and difficult fairways to hit uh, were the three kind of filters I put in. Um, but I don't think the filters were on. I think this was just ran with just, you know, open filters and just see what happens. Um, Russ Henley has won here before. Uh, as we mentioned, Web Simpson's done here well. Makes sense. This kind of sets up our web course, but I'm a bit nervous. You know, of course, pricing's not out. I am recording this about 1 p.m. Eastern time uh, on Monday, and usually pricing doesn't come out till 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So we don't have pricing, but again, I just wanted to look at, uh, you know, start doing already some pre-analysis and also give you the information, let you start thinking this over. I think Malnati is going to be an interesting play. Um, James Hahn, I believe, he, he, I think he went, uh, either had a T2 or went to a playoff here before. Um, that's about it. I mean, of course, Zach Johnson, I think, is live here. Um, you know, guys, like I said, that just hit, hit fairways. Um, not worried about the distance, but uh, then hit pro shots and, and can make putts. So that's it. That's just a quick preview. Um, you know, I appreciate if you are new to the show, uh, you know, please subscribe. Uh, I'm doing this no cost. I don't have a, uh, you know, a website or something I'm trying to shoot you to. I'm just, I do this analysis already for myself. And I decided, hey, you know what? I want to share it with other people and hopefully they get value in what I've been seeing from my subscriber base, even though, you know, it, I am, been doing this as in recording it um, for about, uh, well, it was actually, you know, right after like the COVID shutdown, it gave me, gave me something to do on the side. Um, but uh, like I said, not trying to, from a, any kind of money perspective, I'm not uh, sponsored or pushing you anywhere. I'm just giving you all the information and data work that I do during the week uh, as I build my lineups. And that's what I'm presenting to you guys. So if you like the way I do things, please like it. If you don't like, or think there should be something else, that you would like to see, I would uh, appreciate any uh, criticism or comments. Uh, always appreciate it. And then also, I am on Twitter um, at DFS Golf Guru. If you have any questions that you want to ping me with, or any thoughts, or any ideas, or anything about showdown or whatever, 
Uh, hit me up on Twitter. I do check it, not like hourly, but I do check it. So I will get back to you as soon as possible. And that's it. Uh, tomorrow I will release my uh, top plays and fades. And then I have a show on Wednesday where I uh, give you kind of my hidden gems uh, before uh, the lockdown and also projections. So thanks very much and uh, good luck to uh, to us.